Hello everybody, my name is George Freakan. Welcome back to the Lights on Data show. Live on location at the Web Summit Vancouver. And I have the pleasure, the honor of sitting here again with Manav Gupta, VP and CTO of IBM Canada. Welcome. Thank you, George. It's a pleasure to see you again. And it's a fantastic event. It's great to see all the all the startups. It's great to see the energy. And it of course, is. it's great to see you. Oh, So thank you for doing this. Thank you as well. I mean, the IBM booth, it's getting a lot of traction as expected. You have the foosball table yeah. with the AI-enabled traction and commentary. And of course, the ping pong table on the other side, which I did win a game yesterday. Excellent. I'm so <laughs> glad that you got to try it for sure. Okay. Yeah, so maybe, much fun. Maybe we got have, have, to have a mat. That sounds like fun. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. I'll take you up on it. Yeah. So, Manav, walking around, seeing all the booths, I'm hearing a lot about agentic AI. Fine. And I feel like 2025 is the year of agentic AI. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to hear your perspective on it. And how do you see that agentic AI is distinguishing it itself from the traditional AI systems? Sure. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, as you said, it's a hot topic. So, the world has moved on from generating text via AI to using AI in its applications in, you know, in a chatbot right. or an assistant right. into now getting AI to do something for them. And that's what agentic AI is, which is basically uh, this program, this, this autonomous agent that has some agency. So that has some authority on your behalf, mm -hmm. on the user's behalf mm -hmm. to go take an action. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. We are already starting to see agents emerge. And the agents could be a very simple agent such as an agent to check what changes were made to a file before you commit it to GitHub. Or could be a travel agent, a Salesforce agent, a travel planning agent. So we are beginning to see many of those agents emerge. Yeah. And I think in the next three to five years, that this is going to be the area of focus. Right. And the way we work is going to change quite significantly. I can already see that, how it's contributing to enterprises, digitalization, yeah. improving that efficiency, trying to do things, I mean, at least at least trying to do things that we know they're, they're prescriptive in a way and they're directive. We know the steps that we need to follow. I think agents are stepping in yeah. and they're doing that properly. Def definitely, go ahead. I'm very curious then, so I'm seeing that the whole AI agent model is being based on this modular architecture, includes a lot of different layers, you know, anywhere from, of course, the data itself, the feedback loop, all the, um, uh, what do you call it, the goals and so many other things, yeah. uh, tools and everything. Out of all of these and <laughs> ones that I didn't mention, yeah. do you see yeah. one that's maybe a bit more challenging for an enterprise to be able to operationalize? That's a great question. So, so let's let's take a step back to understand how an agent works. So, when we talk about an uh, an autonomous agent taking an action, the idea is that the agent, as you said, can execute a task. In order to do that task, they have to have some memory. Memory can be short-term and long-term memory. In order to do that task, they need to be able to call some tools. Think of a tool as an LLM or an agent via an LLM, calling, for example, a search engine API, a calculator API, or a weather checking API, right. or a call to a backend system. So that's what I mean by tool calling. And then the agent should have the ability to do some reflection. So thinking back, so, so take a look at the output of the task that it did using the tool, and reflect to see did it execute it correctly, and if not, take a step back. Yep. Fundamentally, that's an AI agent, the characteristics of an AI agent. Now, what's emerging is every organization, big or small, as they start implementing these agents, they require the data to feed to the agent, the integration that has to happen for those agents, and then more importantly, how do you give two critical things? One, how do you give the context to the agent, which effectively is going to the LLN? And number two, how do you talk to agents that you maybe you didn't write. Mm -hmm. So how do you orchestrate a solution or a system across mm -hmm. multiple agents? Mm -hmm. Those would be the two areas of challenge that I see organizations facing. Now the industry is responding, and as always when innovation starts, it starts small, yeah. and then standards emerge. Yeah. So there is an emerging standard of MCP, or Model Context Protocol, so the idea is 
here is a prescribed way of how you can give context to an LLM for your agents. So you are beginning to see hundreds of these MCP servers, as they're called, emerge. Mm -hmm. But the challenge still remains. For an enterprise, to your point, we need to take one of these servers and apply it to my CRM, to my customer, to my HR, to my sales uh, system, and build a set of agents around that. So I think that still is something that enterprises are struggling with, and that's an area that we are beginning to invest right, and build right. our products in as well. And I could see also that's where the competitive advantage will be for the organization, not to use one that applies to everyone's use cases, yeah. but it's specific to their own environment, needs, data, systems. Absolutely, so I mean, so we, we launched Watson X Orchestrate, so that's our identic platform. Mm -hmm. And exactly to your point, the idea is not to be too um, di distracted by the technology, but to build agents that are purpose-built for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So if you're building an AI agent for HR, for help desk, for customer support, most, most organizations will have some common functions, some common themes. So we provide out-of-the-box pre-built agents, as we call them, and there is many of these emerging on a weekly basis now into the platform. So you can get started really quickly and get a get lift out of those. We also provide a no-code, low-code interface, so not everybody is a programmer. Mm -hmm. Can I just drag and drop? Can I just configure through a GUI and mm -hmm. build an agent of mine? Um, and then finally, an emerging area of, okay, can you monitor how your agent performed? Mm -hmm. So agent telemetry or agent ops, that's another capability that we introduce in Watson X Office, right? Beautiful. And you've already mentioned to me a few use cases where AI agents are being used. Is there a particular one, especially in the Canadian industry, where you're seeing a lot more traction, that it's one of the first use cases that's being adopted by companies? I would say ask HR mm -hmm. or, or, an, or an HR agent, an IT agent, and a procurement agent. Those are the three areas that we have seen predominantly get a lot of traction mm -hmm. within the Canadian marketplace. But I mean, the use cases are plenty. There's right. an endless list for right. sure. And lastly, for a company to start their their journey for an AI agent and have that engagement with IBM to help them out on this, what is the first step that they would have to do? I think one, they can just go to ibm.com, search for What's the Next Orchestrate, and they can sign up for a free trial. Uh, my team, we also offer a day-long uh, bootcamp mm -hmm. as an IBM investment. So we call it the Agentic AI Bootcamp, mm -hmm. and the idea is that we'll bring in all the right stakeholders in a team, mm -hmm. and we'll conduct a workshop, which is hands-on, we'll help you develop your first agent and build a roadmap of how you can scale that agent into production. So that's, that would be the two ways of getting started. Beautiful, it can be simpler. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Manaf, for putting the lights on AI agents. Thank you, thank you, George, appreciate it. It's always been it. a pleasure. Likewise, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>